So what he played was b4. I took on b4. I'm really delighted with my position now. Knight a4. But now he plays b5. And for a moment I'm slightly concerned here. You know, am I losing material? Am I forced to play in this knight c3 now? But it's not so bad because I've got knight c3 and knight d1 and b a. His, his pawn's not going anywhere. So I take on c3 and actually I, he takes back and I play rook a3. Now he plays knight b1. And then a nice nifty little move now. I wonder if you can spot it. I'll give you five seconds. I play actually queen a8. So a nice um, move with the queen. If it takes queen a3 and I'm mating him. Because the queen has to interpose queen b2 mate. So he plays bishop d3. And here is where I started getting seriously worried that, oh my God, has the tables been turned with this simple move, bishop d3? Why was I worried, you may wonder? Well, because knight g5, I, I thought my king's had it. Bishop takes g5. If I play hg, bishop h7, and now h4. And this is the last thing I want, my king in the firing line of his h1 rook. But even in this position, apparently, you know, there's the saving resources, what, which is what I played earlier. There's rook f2 here. And white doesn't have time, apparently, to mate black, fortunately for me. Because if the queen moves, say the queen moves to g6, there's a lovely mating move here. Can you spot it? Five seconds. Bishop b2 mate. So the rook on the seventh is very, very powerful um, here. Uh, okay, so what I did, I didn't even, you know, want to risk that. I played actually rook f2 immediately, which Rivka agrees is the strongest uh, move. Um, so not recapturing immediately. Um, and here he plays bishop takes e3. Now on the chess world forum, Rain has asked, um, you know, what if queen takes f2? I think black m maintains a massive advantage here. Just taking, now say blocking the pawn. Black can just take on g5 if nothing else. But um, Ribka um, continuations, um, strong ones at depth 10. Bishop g4, rook takes d3. All right, let's have a look at rook takes d3. So say rook d3, queen a2. Black is still threatening all sorts of menacing things like queen b2 now, winning even more material. So say knight d2, check. King d1, bishop takes g4. Basically... Um, Black's attack rages on here. So saying this sample continuation, it's it's just all over. So horrible for white. So basically, um, rook f2. And what I had suggested to my opponent actually in post modern was, you know, did he consider rook d2? That's I thought that was an interesting move. But actually, after rook d2, maybe I just play rook takes d2. That's what I suggested that I play to my opponent because after knight takes. I've got a little bit of time now to flick in rook a1 um, check. Or, um, actually, actually rook a1, does that actually work here? Rivka's not, not that impressed. Knight b1. Ah, queen a3 is answered by king d1. So actually more accurate here is actually e d. e takes d2. After king d1, just rook a1. I did see a variation where I was just scooping up that rook on h1. So after that, there'll be nothing to worry about. So I don't have to open my king up. Uh, that was the key thing. It's, you know, after you've been attacking the opponent's king, the last thing you want to do is expose your king to, to an assault of any kind. So rook f2 was a nice move. Because his bishop had just left control you know, of that square, that f2 square. So it was quite a logical move. Uh, based on the opponent's last move. Apparently, by the way, that's a very good way of finding candidate moves. Look at the opponent's very last move to see, you know, what new special opportunities have arisen. So that bishop takes g5, you know, gave opportunity for the rook f2. Um, so that was a very important candidate move to consider. So he plays uh, bishop takes e3. I take his queen. It's really all over, but I find a way of winning a piece now. Check, and this lovely discovered check. After bishop c2, I'm winning bishop. And believe it or not, he played on to test me. Maybe he was like aiming for stalemate. So I'm going to whiz through these moves. Oops. 
Let's go back. Sorry, I'm going to whiz through these moves. So basically, he played on. Yes, I, I even I was able to win this position, um, especially with Rook takes f3 after he played Rook a1 because I, I I saw this idea. So his resistance was futile. <laughs> so um, yes, he even played on here. This is 150 ECF. Um, he's got two pawns to get rid of if he wants to create a stalemate situation. I didn't want to take either of them. I just mated him instead. So that was round two. I hope you enjoyed that game. Let's have a quick look at um, the important bit in, in the opening. So King's Engine, Petrosian system. So, um, you know, it's useful that uh, knowledge in the Averbark system can help Petrosian system. So even though it might seem a mammoth task, to sort of be able to play the King's Engine, to handle all these different systems. You know, sometimes there's cross-linking of ideas. Uh, C5, you know, is a common idea in the King's Engine if White plays an early D5. But uh, Knight D2, yeah, is he's changing it from the Averbach, you know, where White usually plays Queen D2. And um, basically, uh, this F5... Um, yeah, you know, he, he shouldn't um, be take, taking on f5, I believe. Because, you know, if white, blacks shouldn't ever take on e4 because white will get a massive knight on e4. So he made some strategic mistakes here, unleashing this bishop. Um, and, you know, the tactical justification is there. And also, you know, this pawn's going to be dangerous. So really, he was in trouble now. And um, I just just went was able to use these trump cards now, these strategic um, assets, to really just launch quite a, you know, a direct attack against this king, you know, starting with rook a6. Um, by the way, that what I also had considered, I didn't mention this, knight b5, I was looking a4 here. Um, a4, I thought this would be crushing, so say knight takes. Um, oh, actually, sorry, a4, not... After knight b5, if a4 here, knight takes c7. Well, th this is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, queen e5. Yeah, I think this is the move I'd considered dur during the game. And, and now, you know, if knight takes a6, then a takes b3 is crushing, or knight takes b3 is crushing. Um, so white, white would have to give up the queen. But um, but actually, fascinatingly, um, in this position, so knight b5, also bishop takes b5 here, is apparently strong. c takes a, a4. It's a case of a lot of roads lead to Rome here, because black's position is, is very dominating with this, this bishop on the diagonal. So sacking a rook here even, knight takes b4 again, wins the, the white queen. So yeah, it was just the case that it, it was a crushing position. So um, his king position um, was terribly weakened, but then there was this moment of slight panic which had to be resolved. You know, how am I going to avoid an onslaught against my king? Uh, and this lovely rook f2, instead of the ordinary recapture. So it seems, you know, white is really embarrassed now with, with no attacking um, prospects. And... Um, and then the rest is just um, was quite easy. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.